Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Court the Nurse Realtor, and I am Court the Nurse Realtor. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are oldie but a goldie, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, welcome back to my channel. You know I missed you. And if you are a goldie, you already know if you see scrub tops with the stethoscope, this is going to be a nurse related video. In this video today, we are going, we're in our Pack You Nurse series, and we're going to talk about Pack You assessments. So if you are like thinking of transitioning to the PACU area, if you like, child, what do y'all even do in the PACU? Or if you just want to be plain on nosy, go ahead and stay tuned to this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. Ring my bell. Ring my bell so you can stay notified of my weekly videos. Some of you may know, my goldies know, but some of you, my newbies, my new viewers, hey, you may not know my name is Courtney. I am a registered nurse and I've been a registered nurse for 12 years this year. My experience ranges from um, MedSearch Tele, Hospice, PACU Recovery, and most recently case management with an emphasis in utilization review. Um, the bulk of my nursing career has was spent in the PACU Recovery, so I decided to do this series on PACU Nursing and because it was requested and some questions were asked by my subscribers. So um, this video in particular is about PACU assessments. Oh, if you are a subscriber to the channel, you know I am huge. I am big on assessments in whatever specialty you are in as a nurse assessments 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 assessment assessment assessing a patient can um save you a lot of uh a lot of turmoil a lot of things going on if you stay on top of your assessments and sometimes it's hard to do but it's a necessary uh point or a necessary uh part of this profession or part of this job so as far as PACU is concerned your main assessment is number one your airway your airway, your airway, your airway. And I have done a video on airway management, so go ahead and watch that video just to see, to go in depth of how we manage airways in the PACU recovery area. Um, also, you are doing your across the room assessments. You know I'm big on that, so I should probably have the video here about, if not, it'll be in the description box of um, just doing your across the room assessments and how important it is. Um, so, Next to airways, you are need to man monitor, of course, the operative site and your vital signs. Now, I want to say this as a disclaimer. This is my nursing, um, from my nursing experience. This is what I've learned. These are tips and tricks, tips and tricks to help um, a transition to this area be more smoothly, smooth or successful for you. By no means does this supersede the policy or procedures I got a video on that, a policy and procedures that are um, imp being implemented in your facility. So always refer to your facility for guidelines and for um, policies. Because uh, you go, you can call the courses, my name Benny and I ain't in it. Okay, okay. So yes, um, airway is a major, your assessments are your airway your operative site, and your vital signs. These are your three major assessments in the PACU recovery because these in that vital phase, the phase one phase of recovery, these three um, assessments can change in a split second, okay? So um, you, if, like I said, the airway, man, airway management video, your operative site. Your operative site, I think, is so important, important because that's the whole reason why we all here is because this person had a procedure. So whether you are recovering a C-section, whether you're recovering a craniotomy, whether you're recovering a lap coli, lap api, um, uh, uh, anterior, um, you know, when they do the anterior uh, surgeries that for the, are for the back, or your thyroidectomies, um, your parathyroid, all these procedures you need to be monitoring the operative site, your orthopedic surgeries. That is so important, your orthopedic surgeries and your um, vascular surgeries that you're assessing for your pulses, you're bringing out your Doppler to hear the pulses. Like these, monitoring the operative site is the whole reason that we're here. You're monitoring, of course, the total package for the airway, the breathing, the vital signs from the anesthesia. But you're also monitoring the, the place where they did the, the surgery. Um, when it comes to vital signs, this it has, to be, um, it has to be monitored according to your facility. So typically in my travels, I've noticed that people like five vital signs 
every five minutes times four, then every 15 minutes times four, then every 30 times two, then every hour it goes. And that was, should be where you are in a more um, stable or baseline for your patient, depending on the acuity of the patient. Um, and so I would say that you should document all those times. And also you need to document a strip of a rhythm strip. I, use, I get a rhythm strip on all my patients. And check your site. So for me, if you are receiving a patient and you're doing vital signs five times four, you should be documenting and looking at your operative site five minutes times four, 15 seconds. So every time you're doing a vital assessment, you need to be doing a operative site assessment or in the surrounding area, extremity, whatever it may be, depending on that procedure. Also, when it comes to the strike through, JP Dreams. These things need to be monitored attentively because at any given moment, the surgeon could say, hey, well, what's going on with my site? If you haven't looked at your site, how you know what's going on? Your, your patient could be laying in a pool of blood. You would not know. Never be afraid with permission to pull back these patient covers and see what's going on up under there because sometimes we don't assess these patients and there are things that are going on that you could identify early if you are following the procedure and guidelines and assessing the patients in a timely fashion. Make sure, say for instance, you have a procedure where there was a whatever type of procedure and they Maybe you have, you're doing a plastic surgery and they have um, put on there the, the surgical bra and you started to notice a lot of strike through, which is like the blood or the secretions coming through the bra or whatever. So I like to mark certain places. So if it's like a bandage, I'm going to mark on the bandage if I start to see a lot of strike through that is growing. And I'm like, is it growing or is it not? I will use strike through and I will mark it, use a marker and mark the area and keep assessing that to make sure that we're not having any type of bleeding or hemorrhaging. Um, also, check your extremities. This is so important in your ortho patients because if those fingers become cold, if they become um, blue, you have a problem on your hands. It's, you need to be assessing with your vascular patients pulses. If the patient went in with a pulse, the patient acutely pulsed, operatively have a pulse, and you can't feel a pulse, now you got to go to an ultrasound, that's a problem. I mean, a Doppler, you got to go to a Doppler pulse, that is a problem. No, a PACU is really, you're going to have focused assessments, but it should be attentively seen after those 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 detailed assessments, those focus assessments, because this is in this acute stage is when you're going to recognize if there is a major problem or not. So make sure that you're doing your assessments on time and in a timely fashion. Um, another, um, some sensitive areas like that or a specialty area would be C-sections. C-sections need to be recovered um, because remember, typically, not all the time, but typically, they have had the uh, spinal blocks, okay, the epidurals. With epidurals, they can't, so you're assessing for, and they're not the only people who get epidurals. You have um, you have some um, ortho cases that get these epidurals or get those blocks. You can have some, um, you can have some general surgery patients that get tap blocks. So people get blocks in other areas and it's your job to assess. So you can't expect somebody to be lifting their leg up and they done had a tap block. like Or excuse me, they done had some type of knee block or extremity block. So you have to assess and know what you are receiving and know their baseline too. That is, you need to know a patient's baseline. Because you may be expecting them to do something when they are awake that they couldn't even do at their baseline. So know your patient's baseline. That's a little tip true. But back to the C-section. So when you're um, assessing for a C-section postoperatively, you're assessing two things. You're assessing their ability to move their lower extremities post-spinal, post-epidural. And you're also checking their fundus and their uh, vaginal area for bleeding, for hemorrhage. These people, these patients can go south on you so quick. You understand me when I tell you so quick, so quick that it is imperative. When I used to recover um, C-sections, we assess them every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, we ask them to lift their legs to see if they can move their extremities on their own. We ask, we're checking their fundus and we're um, excreting any 
any Loki or anything that's in there that needs to come out to make sure this patient is not hemorrhaging by the time they're ready to go to the postpartum floor. So your C-section patients can go south on you so quick, y'all. So if you are in a hospital that recovers C-sections, that's a tip and trick. I'm um, trying to think of anything else that I can give you any tips and tricks for... Um, just understand that it's focused assessment. If you are doing... If you you need to, if you are recover whatever your type of procedure your patient had, make sure that you are paying close attention to that particular system. If they are having they had some plastic surgery, you're paying attention to that size to that site. They have a craniotomy. Craniotomies or anything neuro, it can be tricky because you have to monitor a lot of different things. Like it doesn't have to be like. One is that so cranies, you might, you're, of course, you're monitoring inside, you're monitoring their blood pressures to make sure they don't go over a certain level. You're also monitoring their affect, you're monitoring their functions, their eye, their pupils. It's a lot. You're not just like focused on one, one thing. It's, it's knowing the total package of the human body and know, knowing what to monitor for in that acute phase one setting to assure that this patient is recovering from the anesthesia. And recovering from the surgery in itself so I hope this video was informative if you have any questions drop them down in the, in the um, comment box let me know if this video was informative let me know if you like these videos or any other topics you want to touch on or any other specialties you want me to speak on that I have experience in let me know in the comment box most importantly I want you to know that I love you but God he loves you so much more God bless you